Hello and welcome people to a tutorial on how to properly record and then de interlace your uh, 240p recordings done on hardware from real consoles. This mostly concerns consoles from 5th generation and prior and if you're recording them on the emulator not really necessary to do any of this. First of all, in order to avoid a lot of trouble, uh, I will show off a couple things that you should uh, uh, make sure that uh, are correct uh, before you uh, before you get around this thing. In Elgato Soft, uh, in Elgato Capture, which I'm gonna be showing off because that's the one I have, you want to record from either composite or S video. Component does not work with 240p, sadly. So either one of these. Let's say, the, uh, yeah. Don't show this again, I know. Uh, make sure to allow 60. The profile really does not matter. Make sure this is not, uh, not uh, this is unticked, this is like this. And this, we also do not really want this. And click OK. I'm not gonna click OK because I don't want these settings, because I don't use... Um, uh, I don't use as video to record any, uh, anymore. And another thing is um, make sure to find where the library uh, folder is. And also, if you're recording, uh, if you're just recording the 240p stuff, you may as well disable this because it's not gonna be uh, terribly useful. So just untick it. But I don't need to do that. Uh, now that we're done with uh, all of the settings, record something and then uh, we can start on the next uh, step. Now, once you have recorded something with your Elgato from a real console uh, that, uh, that displays 240p, uh, you may encounter, uh, when you drop it into Vegas, you may encounter something like this. Don't pay attention to the lack of sound, that is because I uploaded a, a TS file uh, into it. We, we will get around dealing with that later. Uh, you'll encounter something like this. See, um, the image... Uh, where is the option to show in the... Uh, whatever. Um, the image has a lot of lines in it during movement. That is because uh, interlaced image uh, shows um, each frame in two goes, so to say. It was the way that uh, analog TVs worked back in the day and it really does not work very well with uh, modern machines. Uh, I have my project set to uh, basically what I would render it at um, well, actually, let's make it 60, yeah. Make, uh, it makes very little difference, to be honest. And uh, v Sunny Vegas does actually uh, offer several options of getting rid of this, however, they're very hit and miss. First of all, we have Blend, which, as you see, lowers the frame rate of the image to more or less 30 and blurs it the hell out. It's even worse when you actually have it set to 30 frames as we do here because it usually will default to the blurrier frame as you can see there is a lot of motion blur. You can try to adjust it very slightly but it's very hit and miss and it will usually uh, go out of order anyway. Yeah, like here, I moved it by a frame and now it's all nice, but here, again, everything's blurry, again. Not nice, not very nice at all. Now here we have Interpolate Fields. Interpolate Fields is uh, has been improved in um, Sony Vegas uh, for um, uh, Sony Vegas 14 in that uh, it will actually make the image uh, in 60 frames, let's see, 60, there we go, and every frame will be different. 
However, uh, it's not an ideal solution because uh, uh, this way the image shakes a lot and that causes a lot of issues once it's already uploaded on YouTube because you can't count on uh, the perfect playback to blend the effect of uh, uh, it shaking up and down. It's not particularly noticeable when you, uh, once you actually watch the video, but uh, yeah, it's not, not ideal. So if you were to use this, uh, going with 30 would be, be uh, would be best. Um, Sony Vegas 14 also offers Smart Adaptive, which looks very nice. However, it lowers the frame rate to 30. And, uh, well, we don't really... Uh, we can do better. We can do better with uh, Handbrake. Let me just um, get rid of this and turn it on, because we need to follow this step by step. Now remember when I told you to uh, make sure where the library folder is? It's because that is where the TS files are stored. They are the purest form of uh, recorded, uh, uh, our recorded footage and we want to use it for the interlacing. And before you do anything here... Yeah, let's do this. I don't need this many. Let's add a new profile and make sure that the, profi uh, that the profile you add is going to have the highest possible resolution uh, that you could ever possibly need. New. New. the highest pos uh, possible resolution that you could possibly need and make sure to set it as default. Now, um, now we have more of a free range uh, in uh, editing the resolution uh, of the output image. Uh, but before we do anything, you need to make sure how the cropping works. Now, uh, Handbrake has a default automatic cropping, which actually works really nicely, but you need to make sure for every video, by the way, this is not how the, how the final video is gonna look, but uh, yeah, um, you need to make sure that it actually works correctly because uh, uh, some games have elements uh, that appear uh, they they sometimes use letterboxing or have elements appear in the bl uh, in the black area outside of the screen, and ideally you kind of want to keep them. Uh, in this case, we were lucky because it properly detected that here there was something appearing outside of the screen, uh, but it doesn't happen always, and you need to make sure. Best way of knowing it's never going to mess up is to use custom cropping and set every value to zero as such. And now, when it comes to size, we want to keep aspect ratio and make it the resolution that we want. Let's say, um, let's say 1080p. And it's going to adjust the width accordingly. So now we went, when we preview, yeah, it's, uh, it's in 1080p. Anamorphic, we want to set it to none. Uh, because anam uh, because anamorphic is uh, oh well it's stre it stretches pi uh, pixels uh, which works on uh, which worked correctly on uh, analog devices but not on digital not not quite and here this is where we get to the most important part is yadif yadif the interlace it's a filter which uh, when you set it to bob preset and leave it um, on the default, uh, will uh, result in a really nice 60 frames image. You can choose between 59.94 or 60. I choose for 60 because that's what the monitor, uh, our monitors display anyway. You want a constant frame rate, not peak frame rate. Uh, preset to medium, you can leave all that. And uh, for 1080p 60, 
uh, I want to say like 25, uh, 25 megabytes is uh, plenty. Uh, you can use two pass or turbo uh, and turbo first pass if you want to have a more uh, efficiently, uh, well, slower but uh, more uh, optimized uh, encoding. Um, but you can also disable them if you have a high enough uh, bitrate set. Um, it uh, it really does give uh, a lot more advantage when you're uh, operating in lower bit rates. Make sure to go into Browse and choose destination as well as file name for your uh, uh, video that you're going to convert. And then start encode. I already have the file uh, encoded, so uh, I'm not going to be doing it right now. Instead, I'm just going to open the file. Nope. Or maybe I'm just going to... Maybe I'm just going to open the file right here. There we go. And now that we have the file here, as you can see, it, all, uh, it also has sound. It would have also had sound if you chose the MP4 uh, export to MP4 option from Elgato. However, if you did that, you would also get uh, the uh, motion blur similar to blending fields. And now that I have uploaded it here, you can see every single frame is in the picture. Nothing is missing. And also, uh, remember how here, if I set it to uh, interpolate fields, it would just jump up, uh, bob up and down. Doesn't happen here when it's the uh, de interlaced by a handbrake. So there we go. Uh, now that you have uh, have the file here, um, we can crop it because uh, let, let's say here. Let's take this frame. Give or take like this. And let's fine tune it over here and over here. There. This is as good as it gets. And let's take this uh, this thing, cut it, place it here. And now it's good. Uh, one more thing that you need to make sure once you uh, upload one of these files is to readjust the brightness levels because uh, even if uh, because even if your um, uh, your file looks like the darkness levels are perfect on the recordings uh, they get brightened up once uh, inserted into uh, Sony Vegas now the gen uh, how I generally do it is uh, go equally on brightness and contrast side. So let's just make it 34 and 34 and see when it actually matches with the darkness on the uh, outside uh, on the outside area of the screen. So yeah, this uh, this looks like it's good. And then you mark this, you can, you know, of course, do edits, split, trim start and whatever else you would need uh, you would need to do and then uh, and then render it at uh, whatever preset you would uh, want to use generally you also want to um, make sure that uh, the uh, generally you also want to make sure that the uh, aspect ratio of your uh, project will much, uh, match what you're going to be rendering it at. That way you can make sure that you're not missing out on anything on the screen. Let's say here, I already have a preset done, 1440 on 1080, 
60 frames, 12,000 AVR, average bitrate, and that's good. Give it a title and render, and you're done.